Welcome again to New Covenant Worship Center for service today. We want to welcome you to join us and praise and worship this morning or this afternoon or this evening whenever you're watching with us. In Nahum 1 and 7, it says, The Lord is good, a stronghold and a place of trouble, and he knows those who trust in him. We hope that your trust is in the Lord today, and if it's not, go ahead and place your trust in the Lord because he holds all. He knows your name. And if he doesn't know your name, we invite you today to ask him into your life so that he'll know your name. So go ahead, raise your hands, worship with us today, and let the Lord know that your trust is in him.
so glad that he calls me friend. He's my father, he's my Lord, but he's my friend. So even if you don't have a friend or you feel like you don't have a friend in this time of isolation, he is your friend. He is your friend. And he's there to move for you today. Because mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loosed. God, we believe, because yes, we can see it. The wonders are still what you do. Bodies are still being raised. Giants are still being slain. God, we believe, because yes, we can see it, that wonders are still what we do. We are here.
Hello, everybody. Glad that you're with us this evening at New Covenant Worship Center. I'm Bishop James Marquis. You're welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, New Covenant. Glad you're with us uh, as we uh, get ready to go into the presence of the Lord with the Word of God. Trust you enjoyed all of the praise and worship and those things that are there as we come to uh, get into the Word of God today. Once again, we Pray for everybody that is uh, dealing with um, the circumstances and the situations that we're under right now. We're uh, all dealing uh, with COVID-19, but we are successful. We are blessed. We are protected. We are anointed. And this thing is defeated. Praise God. So uh, we are uh, glad to be in the house of the Lord. Those of us that are here recording this, just a, a couple of here. Uh, but we certainly want to bring the Word of God to you as I believe that uh, the Lord has put it on my heart for today. <clears throat> if we could, uh, I'd like to get right into the Word of God. First of all, tell you, tell you how much we love you and appreciate you. Glad that uh, you're there. Know everyone is doing well. We've contacted most everyone that we can think of to contact and everybody in our house is doing very well and trust that you're doing well. And certainly tonight, if or today, if you're not doing well, we pray that, uh, you know, that God would touch you and help you. And certainly our prayers are with each and everyone out there, with all of our leaders, our president and vice president, all the team that they have assembled, our, our governor here in the state of Ohio and the teams that he has assembled. And uh, with all of our church leaders uh, all over the, the state that are doing their very best to uh, comply and do the things we're doing and with everybody that's being so patient and Thank God uh, turning in and tuning into your church and uh, being a part of, of what's going on. We're just having church, man. That's what we're doing. We're, we're worshiping the Lord and praising Him. And we're not letting anything control us. Uh, we're not under the auspices of being controlled by anything. We are in control because our God is in control. So we praise the Lord for that. If you want to go to your Bibles with me today, I want to talk to you about midnight praise. More importantly, Midnight Praise will bring you out uh, how we need to, uh, to uh, praise the Lord, how we need to understand the power of praise. Again, uh, my goal is to, is to bring that message of hope and faith uh, and that uh, uncompromising faith and the uncompromising trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want you to know He's worthy of praise. Our God is worthy of praise. So we need to understand the power of praise. Uh, if I can uh, recollect the things uh, as I should, uh, we, we've talked about, you know, just the power of His presence, and we've talked about His name. Uh, we've talked about the name of the Lord. Uh, we've, uh, you know, uh, just been doing all kinds of things in that to, to give us ways that will genuinely bring us peace and will also bring us protection. So I want you to know that another way that we have great victory, uh, things that move God. I mean, I'm interested in moving God, and, and I realize that it's not really God that needs moved. It's, it's me. I need for me to be moved. You need for you to be moved. Uh, God does not need our help. I thank God that He takes it. I thank God that He uses us. But I want you to know that when we're praising Him, and I don't want this to be controversial, we are praising Him, we are worshiping Him, but it is moving us. When we praise Him and do those things that, that He uh, would ask us to do and that He's very deserving of, it moves us. When we understand the power of praise, and maybe not a scripture that I'm going to read tonight, but the Bible tells us, and especially of the children of Israel, that God was enthroned in their praise. And that is where we get the, uh, the saying that we hear all the time, that God inhabits the praise of His people, and that that is certainly there. Uh, God does inhabit the praise of His people. 
Uh, I want the Lord, inhabit means to live in, to dwell in. I want God dwelling uh, with me. But the Bible says when we praise him, he will indwell that. He will be enthroned in that. In other words, he doesn't just visit us. He uh, <clears throat> brings himself into a place where he's abiding with us and dwelling with us. So I want to talk to you a little bit today about praise. Midnight praise will bring you out. If there's some place that we are today and we are in places today we need brought out, I believe this is another way that the Bible has given us that we can tap into that strength and power that is Almighty God Himself and that God will deliver us. So go with me in the Bible to Acts chapter 16, and I want to read the 25th and the 26th verses there uh, to begin uh, today. <clears throat> The Bible says in Acts 16, 25 and 26, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. The prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loosed. Now it's important to understand um, and, and I think the King James actually says that, uh, that Paul and Silas were, were singing uh, and, and praising the Lord and the prisoners heard them. And in the New King James, which I read tonight in your hearing, it says that the prisoners were listening to them. And that is deliberate for me tonight because I think it's important that um, there's a difference in someone, you know, that has heard what you've said or someone that's listening to what you're saying. And I realize you can flip all that around but it struck me that they were listening to them. I think that right now, God's people, even in the midst of the circumstances, ought to be praising Him. And I realize that sometimes day to day, and maybe you're a parent that is, has been forced into homeschooling, and uh, maybe you're realizing, you know, what the teachers go through every day, and, and that you're perfect little pumpkins, and they are men, they're darlings, they're, they're blessings, but it's different when you sit down to teach them. Maybe you're, you know, uh, you know, I'm not trying to make light of it, but, you know, maybe that's a situation. Uh, maybe you've been working a job and all of a sudden you're out of work and, and you're wondering how you're going to take care of your precious little pumpkins. Well, I want you to know that God's going to take care of it. He's going to take you. We'll come through this. Uh, you're going to go back to work. You're going to have the money that you need and your children will go back to school and you will send apples to school every day when the kids go back to school to thank the teachers for what they have to do. So I want you to know that there may be things going on in our lives and, and dear child of God, maybe you're sickened today with this and we're praying for your healing. I, I don't know what you're going through, but we're all going through something. And if you're perfectly healthy and you're perfectly happy and you're all up on top of Jesus Christ and he's filled you with this Holy Spirit, you're still dealing with the restrictions and the things that we're dealing with as this epidemic and this pandemic is going around and this plague is taking its toll on people and on the nation. So in a way, we're all at a midnight and we're waiting for things to get better. We're doing the things that we need to do. We're washing our hands. We're, you know, social distancing and, and we're doing all those kind of things that we're supposed to do, uh, but we're still waiting for this thing to be over. And I realize that everybody's waiting for the day that they say we can go back to normal. And I thank God for that. But, but I kind of feel like already in my heart, normal as we knew it is not like we know it now. I think it's going to be different when we go back. Yes, things are going to get back to normal and there will be a new normal and there will be all kinds of things that we're going to do. Thank God when this thing is shown that it's been destroyed and it's no longer affecting us the way that it is right now. We thank God for that. But midnight praise, and I thought about that for a minute. I don't want to get too far into this because I really want to go another direction, but I thought about praise, which I want to talk to you about. And then I thought about midnight praise bringing you out. And I read those scriptures to you out of Acts because Paul and Silas were in a midnight hour, not just by the time on the clock, but, you know, they were, they were beaten. Uh, they were locked up in prison. Uh, and, and, and all of this for the good cause of God. They were in a midnight time. And I thought about midnight. Midnight is a, is a time of transition. It is a, a time 
when there is expectation. For a moment, and I'm talking about the time on the clock, for the moment, uh, you know, you can go all the way up to 12 o'clock midnight and it is dark and there's no expectation. Midnight is coming. Midnight is that time of transition. Midnight itself is very short. At 12.01 a.m., it's no longer midnight. It may take a while for the sun to come up, but there's not even an expectation that the sun will come up until midnight. We know that until midnight, it's getting darker. We know that we have no expectation until that midnight hour because we're in a time that is called midnight. And then you come to that time of midnight and it is the last moment of that time that you are in. And there is ex an expectation that just as soon as that hand moves past midnight, you enter a brand new day. You don't know what that day is going to hold, but at midnight, at 12.01, you begin to expect the sun to begin to come up. Even if it is yet hours away, there is expectation after midnight. I want you to know that when you can get through the midnight, when you can get through the midnight, you can have the expectation. I feel like that we're all coming to that time of transition in the midnight hour. People are beginning to say that we can begin to see light at the end of the tunnel. We can begin to see things begin to be successful. I think that we're in a midnight. But in this time of midnight, it's not just a time to sit with our hands folded and stew and wait for the sun. It's a time to praise God. When Paul and Silas were locked up in the prison house and it came midnight, when they came to that time of transition, when they had come to the darkest of their hour, and then they were coming to the place where they were looking for the sun to come up, they transitioned. And how they did that was they began to praise God. They began to praise Him. They began to worship Him. They began to praise Him so loudly. And they began to praise Him so so vehemently that the prisoners overheard them. Now it wasn't even a secret. Now it was something that they were doing uh, out of, out of the, the depths of their heart. They were praising him. Can I tell you that according to the word of God, when they began to praise him like that and people took note that God was getting in the middle of their praise with that anointing that was coming by the praise that they were doing, the Bible says that suddenly the jail began to shake off its foundation. At the end of that shaking, the doors were opened and everybody's chains fell off. Thank God, aren't you waiting for the day that we see the chains that we're under right now fall off, that the jailhouse door comes open. We may have shaken off the foundation, but our chains will be off and our jailhouse door be open and we'll be ready to move out from where we are. But I want you to know the critical thing in all that was that in their midnight hour, in their time of transition, they began to praise God. You got to get your freight nerves out of the way. You got to get your aggravation and your agitation out of the way. You got to get the homeschooling out of the way. You got to get the concern about the job out of the way. I know it's tough, but when you begin in your time of transition, in your midnight hour, you begin to praise the Lord. God will inhabit that. Let me tell you, when God gets in the middle of your jailhouse, it can't help but rock off the foundation. When the Lord gets in the middle of what's going on in your time of transition, your chains will fall off. That's what we have to look at. We know that God's going to do it. I thought about a story uh, in 2 Chronicles uh, in uh, chapter 20, verses 21 and 22. I was thinking there that King Jehoshaphat and all of Judah were, were uh, uh, being come against by the people of, of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir. And, and there was, you know, they were looking for a, a tremendous battle to take place. But Jehoshaphat, the Bible says, as I read that to you again, Second Chronicles chapter 20, verses 21 and 22, the Bible says, and when he, Jehoshaphat, had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness. As they went out before the army and were saying, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Now, when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against 
the people of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir who had come against Judah and they were defeated. I wanted that God begin to talk to my heart. Listen, when they got ready to go into battle, instead of sending the strongest soldiers they had out, instead of sending the most mighty warriors that they had out, they sent out the praisers. They sent out those that would sing and would go before the Lord and say, His mercy endures forever. They sent those out that were saying, Praise the Lord. And they were singing that and they were testifying that. And they were praising God with all that they were doing. And when they began to praise and say, Thank the Lord and praise God and praise the beauty of His holiness and give attention to His might and His glory and His power, then God came on the scene. God caused the enemy to turn against itself. Thank God the Lord has the power for this thing that has come against us to turn on itself, defeat itself, swell up and die, go away and not be defeated by us, not be defeated by it. We won't be defeated by it, but it will be defeated by the God of heaven and by the people that are arrayed against it. Yet it's going to come through praise. It may be difficult to praise God in the midnight hour. It may be difficult to praise him in that time of transition. Man, I've had enough. I've been locked up long enough. I want to go to the store. I want, to, I want the shelves to be full. I mean, you know, I, I, I get tired. You know, it was bad enough before when you go in and you can't, you know, you can't find the last bottle of the thousands of bottles of the sauce that you want. Now you go in and there's no trouble at all, baby. You know, there ain't nothing there. Thank God they're restocking. I want to go to the store. I want to, I want to go somewhere beside the, 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 the drive through uh, I'm thankful for it. Please understand me. I'm thankful for the drive through I'm thankful that we have enough liberty to do that. I'm thankful that they've got enough groceries to get us by. I'm thankful that we even found toilet paper. But aren't you ready to go sit down and eat with your neighbor and not be afraid that you're going to catch a disease? I mean, stop and think about it. It hasn't even been that long. And yet we're in a midnight hour right now. We are ready. We are ready to be delivered. Some people are getting antsy and some people are getting itchy and are already beginning to, to think about what are we going to do next and how are we going to get this done and what if they make me take a vaccine or what if they, I don't know what's coming down the road, but I know this. We're not out of it yet. I, I believe it might be a minute past midnight right now. But I know that the best thing that we can do is not let anyone, including ourselves and our families and our church folk and everyone else here grumbling and complaining. What we need to do is let people begin to hear us praise the Lord. What we need to do is lift our hands before God and say, Lord, I thank you that I've got enough to eat today. I thank you that I woke up today and I'm healthy. This thing did not come upon me. It has not come upon me or my family. It didn't come upon anybody that I know. I thank you, God. And for those that it may have affected, I want to thank you, Lord, that you're healing them. They will be the ones that recover. And I, we begin to praise. I want to praise you, God, that I'm still able to go to the store. I want to praise you, God, that I can still get in the car and take a drive. I want to thank you, Lord, that I can go out and walk, that I'm healthy and strong enough to go do it and begin to praise praise him. When we begin to praise God, God gets involved in the things that are going on and turns it around for us because he loves us, because he cares about us, because he knows what we're facing. We still don't know. You know its name? I've already told you it's got about in Jesus Christ. We know its name and what it's doing. We're seeing God begin to deliver people which has always been his plan. But I want you to know that we've, we've talked about his name. We've talked about his presence, but now we need to talk about his praise. We need to talk about giving him genuine praise. And I want you to know if you've got to make it up till you begin to feel it, make it up. Praise him. Tell him how good he is because he deserves it, not because you're trying to bribe him or bait him. He's God. But because I genuinely praise you, Lord, have a reason to praise you. There are people watching us today. Praise you, Lord. There are people getting the word of God today. Praise you, Lord. Midnight praise. Uh, praise. Listen, uh, when, when they just told you you won a million dollars for some 
thing that no one knew, man, you, I, I don't know what you did. You, you know, you got the bingo prize. I don't know what you got, but someone told you you want a million dollars. You don't have no fed. You don't have no time praising God. Then you can praise him then. What about the midnight hour? What about your midnight? What about your time of transition? What about how thankful? Listen, listen to me. Listen to me, please. Hear what I'm about to say. There are people right now that are grieving because someone they knew or a family member didn't make it through this thing. We will mourn with them. We will cry with them. We will pray for them. We will be moved with them. We will have compassion on them. We will try to help them and heal them. But we, those of us that are standing here, Help of God must praise him because if we don't praise him and really get our praise before him and understand that in this time of transition and in this time of midnight, in this short period of time when God is changing from one day to another, from one moment to another, from one experience to another, it is at this midnight time that our praise means the most. When we can genuinely reach way down inside and find praise to give him. When we can reach way down inside and find praise to give him. When we can look through tears and praise him. When we can look through nervousness. I, I want you to know that you don't need to be afraid and we shouldn't be afraid, but King David said, what time I am afraid, I will trust in you. I've talked to you about fear of being a spirit. I've talked to you about how you can't let that stay in your life. You can't let it be there. But I want you to know that there are times that we shake. We used to say it like this. We used to sing a song a long time ago. I shook upon the rock, but he's never shook beneath me. God knows what's going on. He knows how to take care of you. He knows how to, he knows how to keep you. He knows how to deliver you. He knows how to deliver me. He knows how to take care of us. But listen to me. It is in this time when the stress seems so easy to get on you and don't let stress get hold of you. Sing and pray. Worship the Lord. Praise Him. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Get the Word and read it. Get it before your eyes, but get before God and praise Him. And I don't just mean off alone in the closet somewhere. Let people hear you praise Him when they check you out at the grocery store and you're six feet from the cashier and six feet from the neighbor behind you and six feet from the neighbor in front of you, get a little loud like the preacher is and says, I, I just want to praise God because I know we're coming out of this. I want to praise God because the three or four of us that are standing right here right now, we're, we, we don't have this. I want to thank the Lord that I'm going to go back home to my family that is well. I want to thank the Lord that I was able to do this and everything. You need to find the praise. I want to thank the Lord. You need to tell someone, uh, the person that's standing there in front of you working, you're going to keep your job. You need to make sure the neighbor behind you that may be laid off, you need to let them know, I praise God because you're going to go back to work. You're going to go back to work and make your paycheck and be able to take care of your family. You're going to be able to pay for your car and your house be able to buy your groceries. I'm glad that the government's going to give us some money. That's wonderful. I thank God for that. But I thank God that we can start giving back. I thank God that when, uh, when we come through this, we can go to the places that we weren't able to sit down at, and we can go in and sit down and call the manager to the table and say, you know what? I thank God that you were open uh, and, and that you were able to serve me in my difficult times. But I just want to let you know that I'm here tonight to eat your food. And, 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 and even if something doesn't come out, you know, just like you like it, you know, when a lot of people, you know, go looking for a problem in the restaurant, you know, because your steak wasn't exactly like you like it. Maybe when you get to go back and eat, you look at them and say, well, you know, praise God that somebody was back there cooking it. And I was able to eat it when it came to my table. Oh, you can find a reason to praise him, but you've got to have it deep in your heart and you've got to know that it means something when everything is good, but it means so much more 
when it's at the midnight hour, when it's at the transition hour, when it seems the darkest to you. But you now, you've tick-tocked past midnight and you're now expecting the sun. You're expecting the light. That's when you begin to really genuinely praise God. When Jehoshaphat and the children of Israel begin to praise God with everything they had, God set ambushments. God is setting ambushments against our enemy. It may be, it may be invisible to our naked eye. It may, we may not understand it, but God is setting ambushments against it right now in the form of people, in the form of drugs, in the form of medication, in the form that he's setting ambushments to destroy this. But listen, we need to praise the Lord. In Psalm 118, 28 and 29, the Bible says this, you are my God. Psalm 118, 28 and 29, you are my God. I will praise you. You are my God. I will exalt you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. He's worthy of praise. He's worthy of worship. You are my God and that alone will make me praise you. I know it's been a good difficult time, but thank you, Lord. There will be other difficult times. It may not be a plague. It may not be the cycle of this deadly disease, but there will be other hard times. It is in those times that we must remember that we need to praise him. I want you to know before COVID-19 was so prominent, there were hard times. There were hard times. There was 9-11, it was a hard time. There are all kinds of things that transpired as hard time. People shooting one another on the highway, hard time. Snipers taking people out, it's hard time. All kinds of things. We've had hard times. Some was more localized. Some was more just to the individual. And then there are individuals that have had hard times. But praise in part, especially those that had great victory, praise helped deliver them. We need to understand that it was important all the way back to Paul and Silas. Their praise in the midnight hour became so exuberant that the prisoners heard them, that the prisoners were listening to them. This whole world is being held prisoner to the things we're dealing with tonight and how important it is for not only your own ears to hear your own mouth from your own heart praising God, but everyone around us needs to hear us praising God. You are my God. I will praise you. You are my God. I will exalt you. You are my God. I will thank you, O Lord, because you're good and because you're mercy endures forever. If it is important to us not just to finish, but to finish well, if it is important, and it is important for us to come out of this, but we need to come out of this well. Anybody can take a test. Some people pass and some people fail. And I'm not talking about living and dying. I'm talking about how well you come through it. I don't ever want to come through as arrogant. But when we come through this, and we will, and you will come through this, I want to be able to look to heaven and say, ha, 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 God, I knew you were going to take care of it. There were times that was dark. There were times I wasn't sure. There were times that I was afraid, but I put my trust in you because deep down inside I knew that your name, that your praise, that the glory of God would bring us out. I'm not laughing at the tragedy of those around us that may have suffered damage. I'm laughing in the face of the devil that thought he'd take us all out, but he couldn't do it. And more importantly, I'm looking in the face of my heavenly Father in the name of his precious son, Jesus, and saying, thank you. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Because that praise will shake the jailhouse off its foundations. That praise will open the door. That praise will cause the chains to fall off. That praise 
will set the ambushment against our enemies. That praise will cause everybody to hear us and know that even we, though we thank everybody that's helping us, it is the Lord, it is the Lord that has delivered us. Would you, listen, take a moment and pray with me tonight. Today. Lord Jesus, how I praise you. And I come to you, Lord, with those that are with us tonight, today, tonight, whatever time that they may be watching this, I pray, God, that you would be with them, that this word would find its lodging in their heart. God, even as it would my heart tonight, today, God, let it so saturate us, your word, that we begin to find praise that we didn't know that we had. Let us take a look again, even in the midnight hour, even in the time of transition, even in the time that it seems so dark and painful. Lord, let us praise you. And not be timid and not be shy, but praise you to every prisoner around us. Here's the praise. For Lord, in this prayer, I make this statement. You didn't just let Paul and Silas out. You let everybody out. They praised you, but you let everybody out. Lord Jesus, today, let us praise you so sincerely that those that will hear us will come out with us free, unchained, unhindered, unharmed. And we will give you praise for it. We will glorify you because your mercy endures forever. We pray for everybody. God, if there's somebody that doesn't know you tonight, Lord, let them just call upon you right now and ask you, Jesus, come into my heart, come into my life, be my Savior, be my Lord. Forgive me. Heal me. Do something with my life. Forgive me and make me whole but I trust you and I give you praise because you will hear that. We give you glory as we make our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being with us. I pray that God has blessed your heart. There's a blessing in your heart and your life. Praise him. Worship him. Midnight praise will bring you out. Let Jesus bless you and love you and keep you. If your church is on, online, if your church is you better listen to your church, then come visit us. I thank you for being with us. God bless you till we see you next time.